the, the tale I've got for you today is through the prism of a 17-year-old youth, as I was at the time, and uh, I'll just share it with you now. Many years ago, before I became a pilot, but not before I wanted to fly, since this was something I had the urge to do for as long as I can remember, I experienced an unusual weekend. This was in the company of others of the flying fraternity in South Africa. I learned some lessons from what happened, but it also tells of the days before restraining things like insurance, public liability, and strict adherence to civil aviation law and regulations <laughs> became part of everyday uh, aviation life. In this particular town, aviation had played a large part in its history. It had previously been an, been an Empire Air Training Service aerodrome. But all that now remained was a large airfield, three aircraft in a small hangar, and a few enthusiasts. One of them was a local retailer, B by name, uh, to whom uh, I, as a schoolboy, had expressed my interest in aviation to him in the strongest terms. He had previously taken me on a short flight in a Piper Cub, paid for by my father, which cost a lot of money, seven pounds. This had been my second aeroplane ride. I was 17 years old, had just completed my school career, and it was a Saturday morning in summer. I received an invitation to accompany B, his fellow pilot A, together with A's wife and her unattached female friend, about four years older than me. How could I have ever forgotten your name, my dear? <laughs> this object of, uh, was for the five of us, uh, excuse that, it's actually six, counting B's very old fox terrier dog, to, to go to a small spa resort, a uh, town about an hour and a half away in the Tiger Moth, spend the night there and then return the following day. Or rather, that is what the purpose of the mission appeared to me. I hitched a ride to the airfield and as arranged, cleaned the aircraft. A Piper family cruiser, anybody familiar with a Piper family cruiser? It's a three-seater with a pilot in the front and the two passengers behind, and, and the Tiger, which was A's property. And this I had to do before the arrival of the party. The weather was perfect for that summer afternoon. When the rest of the party arrived, uh, the ladies asked me if I'd had any lunch. And on replying to the negative, one of the women folk offered me some nice warm milk to drink. Uh, B instructed me to sit in the front cockpit of the, of the moth, to hold tight onto his dog, and to make sure that it didn't obstruct the controls. He stressed that this was particularly important when we approached our destination, since, I was going, since he was going to be doing some aerobatics to announce his arrival to the locals. <laughs> when the engine started, I was effectively incommunicado with my backseat pilot, as the trusty Gosport tube just didn't seem to be doing its thing. In flight, in the afternoon, the sun was warm and the thermals were rising everywhere, making life very uncomfortable for me, the inexperienced passenger who was trying to control the dog, determined to bound out of the open cockpit. <laughs> After what seemed an eternity, a green splash of vegetation appeared on the otherwise brown felt. Was this the destination and was relief soon to be at hand. Oh no, it was now showtime. Don't ask me to describe uh, the manoeuvres, but there were no roles, and the reason for this I'll give to you later. My stomach soon showed how little it liked the sudden G applications, and no instructions had been given to me about what to do in this case. Well, I thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to be, I thought it would be a bad idea to be sick in the cockpit, a better, better, rather better to do this outside the aircraft. <laughs> Bear in mind I was well strapped in and able, and able to look back towards the rear. <laughs> Sick I duly was, uh, but I wasn't feeling much better. Whether the aerobatics had ceased or not, I can't remember. Then a horrible thought crossed my mind. Say Big had been looking outside the aircraft on the same side that I had been sick. 
seeing that I was going to be sick again, wouldn't it be a better idea to be sick over the other side instead? <laughs> this I did. And malfunctioning gospel tube or not, sounds of extreme distress were coming from the rear cockpit. <laughs> the landing was carried out on two adjoining rugby fields. And while taxing in the string of oaths and threats coming from the rear cockpit, struck fear in my young heart. B had been a sailor in the Royal Navy in the North Atlantic during the war, and he certainly could speak the language. <laughs> yes. When the engine stopped, the curses continued, and I didn't think it would be a good idea to be trussed up in the harness while such an angry person worked his way around to the front to give me even a fraction of what he had promised. I dropped the little hinged door, but to release the dog, I first... Uh, so, sorry, but to re release uh, uh, the harness, um, I first had to take the hand off the dog uh, to pull a pin out of the, the big tiger uh, buckle in the middle. And as I did this, of course, with the door down, the old dog gave one bound through the open space made by the door and fell onto the lower wing with its legs going clean through the fabric. <laughs> it, it kicked itself clear and jumped onto the ground. But the the uh, noises made by my by my ex-pilot, ex-pilot I might say, now, now reach great heights. What would A think of the damage to his beloved tiger? Fortunately, A was quickly on the scene and seeing my obvious distress and not uh, and told me not to worry about the damage. A few doped on patches would soon have the tiger as right as rain. A calm, B calmed down considerably on hearing this and to his credit, uh, continued the weekend as if nothing had happened. A local luminary appeared on the scene. You couldn't miss him as he was a big man. Let's call him C. He'd been awaiting our arrival. He was the person that every pilot on a trip wants to meet. Who would that be? He provided the fuel. Okay, and C to appear to be a man of undue influence in this little hamlet. He owned the local store, the only garage, and for all I knew, also the police. I sensed he was an important man to humour. The purpose of, the, of flying here was then explained to me by B. It was to collect funds for the flying club that they belonged to. Uh, this the pilots would do by giving as many people uh, in the locality a short flight in return for money. The fact that they weren't commercial pilots didn't matter since none of their prospective passengers had ever heard of the DCO, DCA, let alone what it stood for or what regulations it had to enforce. My job was to help with the refueling, swing the Tiger's prop and help passengers in and out of the planes. Some prospective passengers had already gathered at the aircraft. It was interesting to hear them uh, discuss what pilot they wished to prefer, with, to pre prefer to fly with. A was an ex-Air Force tradesman and he had an olive drab flying suit. This made him their first choice because B was only dressed in conventional clothes. For many of them it was their first plane ride. A flew the Piper and B the Tiger. The flying started and uh, while A was changing passengers uh, in the Piper, his Tiger staggered across the field at quite a low altitude, more than once in most unusual attitudes. Later I saw uh, A in the, in the family cruiser apparently do a touch and go on a nearby grassy hill. When both pilots were together I heard them talking. Uh, a asked B, more out of interest and anxiety, what he'd been getting up to in his tiger. B replied that he was practicing rowing the tiger and he had almost got it right, hence the unusual attitudes. Uh, A in turn remarked that he'd, he'd uh, touched down on the hill, if only the fair paying passengers knew. When it got too dark to fly, C changed uh, the area around the airstrip into a temporary driving theatre, apparently a Saturday night routine. It, uh, it was long before television was introduced in South Africa. He erected a portable screen and had a projector mounted on a VW Combi. The local people turned up in large numbers in their cars. I and the young unattached female settled down to enjoy the film. 
B had appeared, disappeared in the meantime. As an ex-sailor, he knew where the nearest grog supply was. He returned later ranting and raving, much the worse for wear. Fortunately for me, his drunken concerns had nothing to do with a the flight there. A and I slept underneath the tiger and the ladies in a small tent they had brought. What happened to B, I don't know. He was there next morning when the strategy to attract more passengers was worked out. Newspapers were required, so somebody went to the local store and bought several Sunday, Sunday editions. C appeared on the scene as well. He informed us when the morning church service was going to be held, as it would not do our cause any good if our plans conflicted with that of the local preacher. The newspaper pages were subsequently torn into long strips. A was the pilot uh, of the Piper. C had been invited along and I sat, sat in the third seat next to him with all the newspaper strips. The aircraft was parked at one end of the strip. Past the far end stood a row of blue gum trees. A hit the starter and without any delay whatsoever, lined up and started the takeoff roll. Uh, we were heavy with C on board, but the tail eventually came up. Right afterwards, right afterwards the engine quit. <laughs> What happened, a worried C shouted. Engine cut, A replied. We came to a safe stop. I understand that uh, the US uh, federal um, air regulation covering the design of light aircraft requires that the, the amount of fuel tubing between the fuel selector and the engine must, be not, must not hold enough fuel for the aircraft to complete a takeoff run. I'm open to correction on that. Well, the family de cruiser's design was right, because the gum trees were waiting. Um, A turned the fuel selector on and restarted the engine. We were soon airborne. C climb climbing was slow due to C's weight, and bear in mind that takeoff was at over about 5,000 feet in South Africa. We flew over the town, and at A's command, we opened the windows and started tossing the paper strips overboard. From the air, they looked like flocks, flocks of bird coming down. This should get the locals talking and coming out for the so-called flips in their droves. We landed normally and on leaving the aircraft, noticed that many of the paper strips were now draped over the tail plane and the elevator. How much more we would have needed to affect the characteristics or jam the elevator, I don't know. The excited public pitched up in great numbers and was taken for rides. This continued all day Sunday and then it was time to leave. I flew back in the Tiger with A without any further incident. The Piper landed long after last light. They told us that an afternoon thunderstorm with strong winds had come up before they left. Only thanks to other people holding onto the plane like crazy uh, was the aircraft uh, prevented from being damaged. I enjoyed this weekend and I uh, have also enjoyed sharing the story with you. At least I survived to tell it. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, <clears throat> something I heard some time ago where someone said I was in total command until I lined up and released the brakes. <laughs> <laughs>